Welcome back to the Leeds United career mode. We are cracking on today as we push out of the January transfer window into the business end of the season where things are still very tense at the top end of the table because there's no points between ourselves and Leicester, although we do have that game in hand. And only four points back to Middlesbrough and six points back to Southampton. And who do we play today? Stoke, Southampton and Middlesbrough. So... It's going to be a pretty strong one. We'll also be simulating Sunderland and Preston as well and finishing off the entirety of the month of February in this one episode. We made some January signings, uh, one being permanent, one being a recall of a loan, actually, to flesh out the squad and improve the starting lineup. So hopefully form can continue. It has been decent of late, although the defeat in the Cup to Swansea was a bit of a pain in the ass. We also lost last time we played Stoke as well. So I would like some payback here. After losing at the Bet365, we want to bring them to Wellham Road and we want to batter them. We're uh, also continually as ever saying thank you to you guys for your continued support of the safe. Thank you very much indeed. Do keep those thumbs up coming and the comments coming as well. We're saying thank you to James today. Thank you to Trevor today as well. And MTFC Lewis which is either going to be Mansfield or Macclesfield. I'm not sure which. Uh, thank you very much for your continued support. Do come and join me on stream as well, so you can see all of the behind the scenes. Some big moves in this save already, so you can see Ashraf Hakimi's move to Liverpool in this first transfer window that has been open because we blocked the opening summer one, didn't we? Tommy Conway has gone to Athletic Club de Bilbao. Strange decision from Bristol City to let him go, but I'm not going to complain. Stoke line up as you see them. Oh, of course, I just had to flashback. Wesley got sent off last time we played Stoke, and then they went and beat me 2-0. Well, I really want payback now. Let's go and batter the bastards. Although they have got full win, three wins in their last four games, so they're in good form. Oh, that's a great ball out wide to Ender Stevens. And Ender's in the box. Nearly. Ender's gone. Ah! Ender's in the box! Daniel Johnson. No, you don't. Then Pearson. Oh, he just evades the... Interception, Vidigal. Don't let him spin you. Don't let him spin you. Step in, please, Archie. Well done, lad. Still all stoke pressure, though. Can't get rid of it. Laurent with a little flick. Pearson again. Nice sharp turn. Finds Wesley. Good hold-up play from him, as you would expect. Ampadu can't get that off Laurent. This is really dangerous from Stoke. And they've got such physicality that... Oh, save, man. I can't just bump someone off it. They just are withstanding everything I'm throwing at them physically so far. Thankfully, Melier made the stop there. Vidigal with the delivery here. Drama's underneath it. Hopefully, that is the pressure dealt with. Although, here it comes again. Ender Stevens. No, I've overrun that. Wesley. Nice. Okay, now we can get rid of it. Breathe a sigh of relief. Willie, you're quick. Go for a run, lad. Through there to Piru. Go on, Joel. My first chance of the game. Piru's left foot. Deadly. Leeds 1, Stoke City nil. Against the run of play, you could say. Hoover down the line. And into Manhoof. Stoke looked for an instant response. And if it weren't for Archie... And they have won! Archie Gray did very well to step in and get the ball away from the man. But then... I'm not entirely sure what happened. He steps in. I'm just trying to... Get the ball under control to get rid of it. And Daniel Johnson has just lashed that home. No mistake from him. Off the underside of the bar. Uh, Stoke City 1, Leeds United 1. And that was an emphat as emphatic a finish you are likely to see. Stoke just seem to be able to withstand everything I throw at them. It doesn't matter whether it's... I oh, could save many eight. Whether it's with 10 men like the first game or 11 men in this one. They're really hard to play against. They've taken Daniel Johnson off now. Oh my God! That was like a bullet! Thankfully, it was wide because if it was on target, nobody was stopping that. And if they got in the way of it, they'd have ended up in the net with it. Christ alive! Oh my God, he nearly took my legs off. Well in. It's still not really doing much for me. Win that header. Somerville. Can we on the maybe counter? 
Go and win the game with the last action of it. Kai Wagner's in behind. He doesn't really have much in the way of support at the moment. Could find Gellhart in here. Joe Gellhart! We've stolen it! I'm sorry, Stoke. You don't deserve that. But you're damn right we'll take it. Leeds United 2, Stoke City 1. Payback for the 10 men defeat at the Bet365 in quite dramatic fashion. Very fortunate that Wagner was able to keep hold of possession. There's nothing fortunate about the finish, though. Joe Gellart has been fantastic for us this season and continues to be. One of the last kicks of the game. Three points stolen from the clutches of a draw. Sorry, Stoke. And I think I almost mean that, actually, because they're very good. And that was a hell of a challenge. Southampton, draw. Great. Sunderland, draw. Great. What did Leicester do? They drew as well. We have ourselves a two-point gap at the top of the championship table with a game in hand. Happy Noid. Next up, fourth-placed Southampton. In theory, these games are going to get more and more difficult as we go on. We were able to beat them last time we played them, Southampton, but they were the first team we played against once we adjusted the sliders to make things more difficult, and they were very hard to play against. Lumley in goal continually as Bazunu's on the bench. Jay Adams, Ryan Fraser and Kamaldine Suleimana are a scary front three for championship level. Holwood Bellis is always a go-to recommendation for centre-back as well. So intriguing to see him here at Southampton right now. We shall see how good he is. They're good. They did lose their last game though. So maybe there's a little bit of weakness in their morale-wise, perhaps. Rothwell. Oh, well then. Ampadu. Not so well done. Roden. Fraser. Good save. Whew. Okay. Nearly a similar ish incident to the Stoke goal. Win the ball back, lose it immediately, concede. Interesting choice, but they've kept possession and then it's immediately come forward again. Harwood Bellis. No thank you. And get it away this time rather than run the risk of losing the ball. And actually, Gellert's in a good position here. And Piru's with me. Quick one, two. And Kai Wagner's away down the left hand side. Again, struggling in terms of other players keeping up with the flow of the move. But we still have possession. And Gellart's made a great run. And his touch is unbelievable. Joe, that's amazing. Good save by Lumley. That first touch, by the way. Perfect. In his stride, away from the defenders and in on goal. Oh, what a stop! Joe Lumley turned into Superman. That was outrageous. He flew through the air. Unbelievable save. It's like his whole body was at crossbar level for that. That's one of the most acrobatic saves. It's the way his legs come up as well. He's literally six foot off the floor there nearly. That's... A oh, God! Yeah, and painful as he comes down. What a stop, Joe! That's why he starts ahead of Gavin Bazunu, evidently. Suleimana, Rothwell. Suleimana again. No, please, thank you. Oh, I just heard someone in the crowd scream, get rid of it! I'm trying! Shot blocked and it's clear. Geller on the breakaway. Oh, go on then. Oh, Joel! This feels familiar. That's exactly the goal he scored against Stoke. Leeds 1, Southampton 0. Joel again. Is Manning into Suleiman. Oh, I don't really want to draw Joe Roden towards it because it's going to leave some space in the middle. Just nipping at the heels. Oh, Piru was so slow to actually pick up that I wanted to rush towards that. Somerville is going to go again. Kyle Walker-Peters is very good positionally, but pace is not a strong suit of his. He's not slow, but he's not quick. Oh, the way to pass is superb. Joel! Nope. Just Joe. Lumley. Brilliant save. Again. Who's up for this? Ampadu! Lumley at it for a second time. Half time. No second goal. Strauch. Nice. Archie Gray going to get forward. Go on, Archie, lad. Somerville. We've not had a Crescentia Somerville counter-attack for a little while, have we? Here comes Kai Wagner. Oh. What's going to be theirs if we can't get that to Somerville, which we can. Oh, what a cross. Oh, Dan James. The delivery. Ma, the finish so very nearly. 
What a start to the second half that would have been. Jeez Louise. Oh, Suleiman is quick. Very quick. He's got good footwork too. Small bone outside the post. Now both sides have hit the woodwork. Southampton very nearly getting an equaliser. Oh, and I could have gone on the counter. And actually, it's fallen very kindly for Che Adams. Suleiman here. Che Adams, strike. A save you would expect Melier to make, but a save that needed making. Fraser off and Adam Armstrong, I think, maybe, coming on in his place. Indeed, it was their number nine. Suleimana picks it up short from Joe Aribo. Here's Flynn Downs now. Southampton starting to turn the screw in this second half. Jack Stevens, not the go-to goal scorer in that position. Oh, if Piru could have gotten that away. Dan James is still available over there, so we will look for him. Win that header, lad. Well up. Get up. I see the run. I see the run. Oh, Joe Arabo puts his big fat head right in the way of it. We will get to Kai Wagner and Somerville. And Wagner again. And Somerville again. No, Walker Peters with a great interception. This is another very close, tense game. Well up, Dan. Ruter. Oh, not where that was supposed to go. I tried my best to deal with it, but Archie Gray can't. Oh, what a through ball. What a block. No, oh, they got lucky. Oh, that's hard to take. Camel Dean, Suleimana makes it 1-1. And they're getting lucky again. Great block. And he just tries to take possession there. The defender, Joe Roden, just tries to scoop it away. And I don't know whether he misses it or it goes through his foot. <sighs> it is what it is. And what it is, is 1-1. Leicester 2, Middlesbrough 0. That's a big scoreline, actually. So as all four top sides are playing one another in this particular match day, let alone this episode. Peru is through. Ruter is there. Oh, I don't quite know how that's gone in. But we'll take the luck. We'll take the luck. That is... I've just noticed that my face cam was frozen. Lovely. That, just as I'm biting a bloody thumbnail as well. Superb. Cheers, camera. That is 2-1 Leeds. Lovely. Uh, questions will be asked of Joe. Oh, he almost like went with his arms up and then had to react as he actually went low. Watch him. He, he almost thinks it's going to go high and then has to actually react as it goes down low. It's an odd goal, but we'll take it. 2-1. Southampton very slow in the build-up here with moments to go. Home fans whistling. Adam Armstrong goes for a worldie and draws the save out of Melier. We love a late winner. We've already had one today. We might have just managed to bag ourselves a second. We hope that there isn't a late equaliser in this for Southampton. Che Adams Trying to hold him up. Small bow winds up. Melier makes the next save. And the referee allows them to take the corner. Keeper is up for it. Delivery will come in from Suleimana. Keeper was up for the last one as well. But there's my goalkeeper. That's a 2-1 win against Southampton. On the back of the 2-1 win against Stoke. That we are very, very relieved to get. Leicester beat Middlesbrough. So they pick up three points and stay within touching distance of us. Go to the post-match interview there. At least I, I believe they beat Mosley. They did indeed by two goals to one. Although I think it was 2-0 when the scoreline popped up earlier in the corner. Yeah, I know I'm going to sell Glenn in the summer so he can just chill for now. We try and take a long-term view, i.e. the aim at the end of the season no, is to get up. That's the long-term view. Sunderland away next, which will be a simmed game. And hopefully three bloody points again. Sunderland were chasing the playoffs. They may still be, but their form is not great right now. Two wins in their last five. Admittedly, they are their last two games. So they're starting to turn the style back on. But with some tired players in there, including their striker and wide options as well, they should be very much beatable. Joe Bellingham is a player that is going to get recommended quite a bit in career modes moving forward, I'm sure. I don't think I'm going to make any changes to the starting lineup either at this stage. So let's just go and beat them, shall we, please? Yeah, I'm up here now because I should have been up here the whole time and I was down there and well done me. 
Peru. Oh, please get it inside to Joe Geller. You've run the wrong way there, Crescencio. It opened up for Joe Geller to just quite simply race through. Oh, unnecessarily flamboyant assist from Joel Peru. But the two of them combine again and Leeds United won Sunderland nil inside 10 minutes. It's very nice indeed. And um, I wasn't expecting that celebration. <laughs> Show you the assist again here. Piru gets it and it, yeah, there's just no need, is there really? Nonto. Oh, that's just sent two midfielders in the one movement and Gellart's in again. And Joe, he's the man of the moment right now. Joe Gellart makes it 2-0 and that's a more orthodox celebration this time around. All made by Willie Nonto's fantastic turn in the midfield. Leeds United 2, Sunderland 0, that'll keep us top. Now, fingers crossed, other results have gone our way as well. Oh, that's not how that's supposed to look. We'll find out. Uh, Southampton draw again, which is good. That's going to see them fall further away from the Hi, front uh, picture. Hi! Uh, so it looks like, hopefully, we should be trying to pull away with Leicester as Thanks, two at the top. Although Middlesbrough might have had a good weekend, and they did indeed. So we are... Oh, but Leicester didn't. They drew again. A five-point gap at the top of the championship has opened up. Middlesbrough in third, now very close to and chasing that second spot at least, with Leicester falling foul of a couple of poor results. Still got low knees from us, Sam Greenwood and Luke Ayling in the starting lineup at left mid and right back respectively. Paddy McNair and Dale Fryer are a solid centre-back partnership as well. Finn as at Cam will look to feed the ball forward to Latalath. Riley McGree on the bench will be worthwhile bringing on at some point. Surprised to see him not in the starting lineup actually. But I'm not going to make any changes to my starting lineup because at the moment they are performing. We will change the kit though because we can play in the away one. Thank you very much. That's why I'm wearing it because we're away from home to the Riverside. Lovely flip by Gellart. Terrible touch by Joel Peru. Here's Greenwood now. One of Middlesbrough's top goal scorers with, well, last time we saw nine, but presumably more now. Latalas deflected, thankfully. Otherwise, that very well could have found its way past Melier in goal. Middlesbrough with the first effort of the game that is dealt with, at least, by the defence, but it wasn't necessarily convincing, and it all kind of came from Peru's dodgy touch. Gellart, can we switch this looking for Crescencio? Some of you we can. Heavy touch inside with the first one. And Peru, and looking for an assist back to Crescencio Somerville. Maybe I should have just taken it all the way with, with the winger. Certainly had the opportunity to. And now we will. Or should I? Maybe I should have. Oh! He did cross the line! Crescencio Somerville with a belter! Goal line technology probably needed there. Because I couldn't tell in real time whether that was or was not over the line. And even with the goal line technology, you can see that it was only just across the line. But what a finish. We need a replay of the actual finish itself, please. Not just the goal line technology. Wow. And it really was millimetres over the line. It's not going to give me a replay of the goal. I'm sorry. I need to see that again. It was just that good. Tackles the ball back. Sprints away. And from... 20 yards ish. Watch it in real time. Oh, tasty. Absolutely superb from Somerville. We lead, we lead by a goal to nil in the 15th minute. <whistles> Honey McNair. Actually, almost trying to draw Middlesbrough onto us at the minute so we can try and catch him on the break. That's a laugh. He struck that with Venom. Well saved by Melier to get it around the corner. Just needed to be in the way of it, not necessarily get it to out-and-out -out safety. Ah, I tried to clear it with Strauch and just couldn't power it up quickly enough or press the button quickly enough. And Latalath is apparently untackleable. Here's Bangura. That's a sharp turn. Finazaz, that's a sharp turn. And it was an accurate attempted finish as well. And again, Melier just gets behind it and for a second time does get it to safety. Can I get to that? I can't. I committed to it. And Jones is in behind. Laff helps that on. Keeper's going to come. Oh, no! What? Is he give a pen? He's giving me a free kick. 
What for? I mean, obviously I'm thrilled, but what exactly for? Did it hit a hand? It's come up and hit him on the hand. That's, I mean, that's so harsh to give a handball for that. Hits him in the chest, bounce up foot, and then hits his hand as he's falling. And it comes straight to the man on this left-hand side. And all Riley McGree has just come off the bench needs to do is just put that in an empty net. Which he has actually done inadvertently with... I mean, it's not even a shooting animation. He's just stopping running and he still managed to put it into the back of the net. Oh, my Lord. That's lucky. We've had late goals in both played games today. Both of which have been result-changing. As a second goal goes in for Leeds United. Second goal for us here wouldn't change the game. But a first for them would. And they very nearly had it. And Bangura had the angle against him. But the goal was open. Roden picks up a yellow card. They've got a pen for that. They've got a pen for that. After he's had the shot. Roden has just run into him. Wow. Wow. All right, Paddy McNair. I've gotten very lucky to get the winner against Stoke and Southampton, so perhaps I was due something like that. It doesn't necessarily make it any easier to swallow. Middlesbrough equalise. Geller. Oh, caught on it. Uh-oh. Genuinely uh-oh. Riley McGree... Back to O'Brien. To Riley McGree. Forced him wide here. And Joe Roden makes the challenge this time around. Not that there was anything wrong with the first one, because he didn't. He didn't. He just didn't. Middlesbrough 1 at Leeds United 1 is the end result at the Riverside. Southampton couldn't take points off us. Sunderland couldn't take points off us. Stoke couldn't take points off us, but Middlesbrough do. We've got Preston North End in one final game to come today. And I'd like to get back to winning ways, please. Hopefully Leicester didn't win. Leicester did. Back within three, but with Middlesbrough being third now, and quite frankly Southampton having fallen off a cliff, it is a two-way title fight at the moment, and Middlesbrough trying to cling to the automatic promotion picture. But whilst we were already pretty confident of getting the automatic promotion, we're even more confident now. Emil Rice or Reese up top for them, their mid-table 12th position. A 5-2-2-1, an unfamiliar formation. They're missing Hughes through injury, but... They should be beatable even if he were in the starting lineup. Their form has been inconsistent. That was loss, win, loss, win in there. Back to Gray again. And Ruter. Somerville on a roll. Someone shoot. Okay. Yep. Piru heard me. 1 0 leads in the sixth minute. This team are already Premier League standard and showing it in these latter stages of this season. Nicely to Dan James. And Joel and Ruter. And there's a second. 15 minutes in. Preston already on the floor. Samuel Reese and Robbie Brady. And Frerkier. Was he onside? He was not. Ball in the back of the net for Preston North End. And he was actually more off than I thought he was. I thought it was closer than that. And in real time, it looked closer than that. Not 2-1. Presswell around the corner. Dan James. Go on then. You're on your left. Why not, lad? Because his left is better. Piru makes it three just before half time. Hello. Is that a Premier League? Make room. Playing every game used to take we used to play every single game, yeah. And it would take 30 episodes to do a to do a season in the lower leagues. People haven't got the attention span for that anymore. Not for my audience, anyway. Goal! That's all. Dan James makes it four. Now, Carlisle is shite, Joe. It was an expected win. Maybe not 
quite by four, but it was an expected win for Cambridge. Finish! Ruter! Well, Cambridge may have won by four goals to nil against Carlisle at the weekend, but Leeds are winning by five. We'll keep our top spot in the table. We have, quite considerably, the best team in the league right now. So the fact that games are going this way at this stage isn't that much of a surprise. We have the highest rated team and also one of the highest potential teams in the league as well. So we're getting a lot of good performances and a lot of strong results. Most of Preston's team was rated in the late 60s. So our team that's mostly rated in the late 70s obviously is going to get the win. We are basically playing with a Premier League side right now. Top of the table by three points this list is still keep the pressure on. We start the next episode with Huddersfield. We do have uh, Coventry, Watford, Ipswich and Norwich also in the month of March. And then Leicester is like this. Oh no, we've, we've played Leicester twice. But we still had Leicester to play. So it should be pretty straightforward end to the season over the next couple of episodes. We hope so anyway. Things going very well for us so far. Middlesbrough have only conceded 28. So it's not like our goals against tally is remarkable. And Leicester have scored more goals than us. So it's not like our goals for tally is remarkable either. We're just pretty good. I'll see you tomorrow.